Very good morning. How are you guys today? Um, someone asked if you could build the free edge with acrylic and basically, um, you know, build with gel. And that is, yes, you can. So if you build the free edge with acrylic, and a perfect example of that <clears throat> is uh, what I'm gonna show you guys right now. Um, it's a bit nail. Uh, I wanna work on a bit nail. I think this is a perfect uh, scenario for those individuals um, who basically can't, um, uh, you know, look, everybody who, who has bitten nails, I mean, the first thing most, I'd say, amateurs do is they reach for a nail tip, right? And they just glue it on and then just overlay it. Working on a bitten nail is like, or, or putting tips on a bitten nail is like basically putting a Band-Aid on a wound that won't heal. So in order for you to be able to basically reshape and rebuild that bitten nail, what you have to be able to do is you have to be able to cast it. So acrylic is a really, really great way of doing that. Um, it's like, again, casting a broken arm and then eventually it'll mend and heal. Well, you can do the same thing. If someone's natural nail grows wide and splayed, I wanna be able to show you guys something. I've, I've, I've gone ahead and I've created uh, a scenario where it looks like a bitten nail. I saw somebody that said, how long is it taking for shipping? It's taking about five days, three to five days to get orders out. We're working on a, with a skeleton crew, you guys, so be patient with us. All orders are being processed. If you place your order today, it usually takes about three days to process, and depending on where you are in the United States, it could take anywhere from two days to six days for shipping. So uh, we are relatively fast compared to everybody else, and that's all that matters. Okay, so getting back to this. Um, when it comes to a bit nail, like this is a perfect example because this is a lot of them, you can see the skin coming up on the front end and on the edge. Like if you, if you look at someone's bit nail, usually what it is is just like a, a, a wide, right? It's wide. So all the skin will bulge up around the ends just kind of like this, right? Um, so it's not just right here on the sides. They usually chew it all the way back to the very, very end, right? So in order to be able to get a, f a, a tip to fit this, um, yes, you can glue it on, but normally the tip is going to secure that much of the free edge when you glue it on, right? And then, you know, again, you're going to, so there's very, very little natural nail that you're actually going to be adhering product to. Um, this is a scenario where you're going to be able to do this. So I want to be able to show you guys how you're going to sculpt on here and recreate a full weld tip with acrylic. But then if you choose to fill it with gel, yeah, it totally works. So you could build it with, say, um, uh, you can build it with concealer or you could build it with uh, cover paint and then you can actually fill it. Uh, with um, any of the concealer gels on top. Acrylic, so basically if, if you build acrylic, right, ac acrylic on the base, then you can fill gel on top. That is absolutely perfect. You don't want to reverse it. You don't want to build gel on the bottom and then you want to do acrylic on the top. It's not going to stick really, really well. But gel will stick on top of acrylic really, really well. In a scenario like this, if it was a very, very severe bitten nail, then what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to cast it. So here's the problem. I'm going to be able to break this down for you. A lot of bitten nails are not going to be just straight like this. Like a lot of situations you have in a bitten nail situation is the, the client's nail is usually at the free edge it is is a lot wider right so depend like this part of the of the nail right is like because what ends up happening and i'll explain is, 
right? A lot of people that bite their nails, what they do, uh, uh, they're like chewing, they chew on their sides, right? They chew on their sides, and they chew on their sides. So that, that growth channel, right, you're actually removing the ends of the growth channel. So the nail doesn't grow straight anymore. The ends of the nails end up growing wide at the ends. So after, let's say, years and years of biting, doing this and this, it's again, you're thinking, oh my gosh, my nails are, are disfigured because now they grow, they grow wide. You could fix that. You could actually, you know, first thing is you have to try to get, you have to get your customers to get their hands out of their grill. That's number one. Um, it's like putting them on a program. You could totally retransform somebody's natural nails back into a healthy, natural looking condition, but it takes time. It's not gonna be overnight. It's basically a, a full transformation. So the problem with bitten nails is bitten nails, again, they, they lift easy. Um, you know, the biggest problem again is the customer can't get their hands, even if you put acrylics or gels inside, on their hands, they can't get it out of their mouth. It's a reminder because every single time they put it inside their mouth, they're like, oh, I don't want to break these away. But, you know, will they last, excuse me, weeks and weeks? No. I mean, you're going to be able to try to guarantee them for up to two weeks. But in the first, let's say, initial consultation, if someone comes in and has a really, really bad bitten set, it's almost like if there's problems that occur in the first two weeks, it's, it's because the condition of the natural nail is in a poor state. That's what it is. And yes, I see someone there, you can pinch acrylic, and that is why you want to work with acrylic. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do this. We're going to build a free edge, and what you can do is you're going to be able to build a free edge of acrylic, right? So let's just say that we built, I built a full well tip. So you can see how the acrylic is gonna go up onto the natural nail. So what I would do in this situation is I would wait till this dries. And then as it dries, I'm going to pinch right here. I'm gonna pinch. So this width that you have right here goes from being this wide to being this narrow, right? Goes to being that narrow because what you've done is you've pinched this cast and then what's going to happen is the nail is going to go from this position to this position, right? It's gonna go from this position to this position and it's gonna grow straight. So instead of growing out this way, you're going to be able to grow straight out this way. This is really, really important, right? Can you soak off gels? No, you can't, um, unless it is a soak off gel. Um, hard gels do not soak off. Um, and I don't want you soaking. I want you to learn how to use your electric file to remove it. That's the key. Key is not soaking. Soaking sucks. Okay. So what we want to be able to do is we're going to go ahead and prep this. I'm going to go ahead and prep by pushing back the cuticle. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change out our barrel. For those of you guys, again, that have joined me for the first time, I'm gonna un you see how my arrows right there, that's locked, unlock. What we're gonna do is we're going to put this on, boom. So what's the time pinch wise? I'll explain to you when we get there. It takes about three minutes, right? I'd say about three minutes before you could pinch. Okay, so we're gonna hold the bottom of this and then I'm going to be able to slide this off. If I'm having a hard time, which I am right now, having a hard time sliding this off because the barrel is really, really tight, I could go ahead and use these, right, to just break this. You could see how it's unwinding right there. Check this out. And then what I can do is I can unwind it and then it just comes right off. That, again, if you're having a hard time pulling, because sometimes the, the arbor bands get really, really tight and you can't get them off. So you want to be able to peel them off instead of pulling it off and actually doing damage to the collet, right? Because inside the handpiece is a collet. That's what holds the bit. Um, 
if you yank it out, then you're going to end up doing more damage. If I can't get this down all the way, then what I could do is I could turn it. I could just push it down and it's ready to rock and roll. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to turn our electric file. I'm going to be able to show you guys. I have 3000 RPMs. I'm in forward because I'm right-handed. I'm going to turn the motor on. Okay. And then what we want to be able to do is we want to go ahead and prepare this. So again, I want to be very, very gentle. I don't want to be aggressive. So I go in one direction, tickle, 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 right? Tickle, tickle, right? And then want, right when I get, you can see how I'm really focusing in one direction. I don't go side to side, tickle, 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 all the way around. And then a little coochie coo all the way through, man. Look at that. Nice and gentle, right? I'm using a very light feathering, feathering motion. Feathering motion as I'm removing shine from the surface of the nail. Boom, just like that. And that's going to be basically, does every bit work? It says, does every bit piece work in every electric, uh, electric drill? It's not a drill, it's an electric file. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, most, yes. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our swipe. I'm going to pump it. And what we're going to do is we're going to clean this, okay? And that's going to remove all of the oils and contaminants from the surface. Um, I could use a dry wipe just to kind of wipe it down. And then what we're going to end up doing is at this point, we're going to do two coats of protein bonds. That's right. Every single one of you guys have been watching. Every morning, man, you get a little tickle, tickle, and coochie coo. All right. So it's it's something that you will you will definitely um, do, um, and it, it's something that you could also like if if you have a customer who's super afraid of the machine. You know, once you turn on the machine, and I've, I've explained this, I'm going to go ahead and, sh and turn, this, turn this around so that you guys can see. So one of the things I do when I'm working with, with new customer, right, or if I'm at a trade show and I'm working with someone and they're like, ah, I, don't wanna, I don't want you to work on that. I don't want you to put that on my hand. What I do is I do this. Once I turn it on in a very gentle speed, the, the, the inside of my wrist is a very, very soft and tender area. So if you're literally just taking that bit and you're just like, check out this little tickle tickle, right? Coochie coochie coo, right? Soft. That's the pressure you want to be able to use when you're actually removing shine from the surface of the nail. It's very, very gentle. You're, you're not being aggressive. You're not trying to thrash on the natural nail. This is going to make them comfortable. Um, it's also going to, it's going to kind of relieve a little bit of the, um, the anxiety that's being built up, especially if they've never had one used on them. Unfortunately, there's too many people out there that don't know how to use it. If you, if you can use it the way that I teach you how to use it, you guys are going to have a lot of success with this, I promise. All right, so let's get right back to this. Okay, so once we have removed... Once we have gone ahead and prepared this, let's go ahead and now uh, prepare the form for application. So in a, in a bitten nail situation, um, the, the components of the nail form, this is really, really important because you, you're, it's very hard to get a rounded edge under a bitten nail because you have, again, most, most of the nails that are out there are very, very, right, they're, they're, they're far back, right? This is kind of funny, but you can imagine, right? So if, if, the, if, if this is the, <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Let's do this. If, if, if this is the nail, right, and there we go. I, I, I don't know. I was, I was drawing a cave. <laughs> okay, so with this situation, if you have someone, right, that has a block finger, right, or they have all the skin around, uh, what you want to be able to do is you need to remove the tab, okay? It's always good to have some good shears, some good cuticle scissors. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to cut that and you're going to place this right underneath just like this. Boom. See that? 
just like that, okay? Now, what I want you to do is you're going to play, you're going to pre pinch it all the way, okay? It's been really cool over the last month doing this for you guys every single day because I get pictures, I get direct messages from a lot of students who are just like, I can't believe my shaping, I, I, you know, I, everything is really starting to make sense, it's coming together, I'm doing forms. I'm going to keep doing this every day, you guys, you know, so uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to help. So you see, I'm, ho I'm holding the, the, the hand I'm holding here, and this gives me the opportunity to place this right on top of the skin right there. See that? So right when I'm getting on top of the skin, then I can secure the side. I let go and I could secure the side. Okay. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to place that, right? Yes, I do save them uh, for the day, and then what we'll end up doing is we repurpose the videos, um, and then we end up uh, putting them back on a little bit later. Okay, so if you can't watch the whole entire thing, not a problem. You'll be able to get back later tonight and rewatch it because I, I will share it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take Hover Pink, and we're going to... oops. So for those of you guys, um, we've been so crazy. Uh, some of the jars don't have the, because we're trying to get product out. But when you go underneath, you can see that speed clear actually mixed. I mixed my cap. You'll always be able to see what color it is if you look underneath the jar. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take speed pink. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this on. I'm gonna be able to show you, so if I, submerse my brush and I tap and I'm going to bounce. I'm not going to pull. Let me just, let me just explain this to you guys really, really fast. So if I submerse my brush and I tap and I bounce, 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 you're going to notice that I'm going to get a really, really nice bead. So at this point, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to kind of set this down. I'm not going to build a really, really long. So remember yesterday when I did this, I set this down onto the nail when we were doing extended smile lines. So for this situation, I want to be able to build something that looks natural. Let's say the customer wants, they're like, I want a mini, I kind of want a mini coffin. Okay, so, well, I mean, like how, how tight are we going to get this, right? So I'm going to be able to build something on the natural nail that's going to be tapered, right? I'm going to taper this. General rule of thumb, and I wanna make this clear, if you guys are working on a bitten nail, the natural nail is only this long. You're not gonna build nails this long. You don't have the support to do that. You just don't. <clears throat> um, eventually you will. But in the meantime, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the customer's natural nails to grow. The more healthy natural nail you have, the better the product is going to stick as you continue to fill the product on top. Okay, so look at this. Let's go ahead and, and set this down. So with, with a lot of the core and, and uh, cover products, you have about a 45 second window before you can't move it anymore. So I just set this down. It's 8.52. Um, within, I'd say, three minutes, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to come at this point right here. And again, I'm working on plastic, so it's gonna be very, very hard for me to be able to pinch. But at the three minute mark, I'm going to be able to pinch right here, okay? Uh, th this is going to allow me to pull the natural nail slightly in. I don't want to pinch it so hard that it hurts. Um, you want to be able to pinch it so that it, it molds the natural nail into shape as it grows. Um, it, you know, and, and again, that's, you know, why do people trim the natural nail to place acrylic? Um, they trim the natural nail to place acrylic. I just saw that. They trim the natural nail to place acrylic because uh, it's, 
it, it really is going to give you the best adhesion to that. If you have a really, really long natural nail and you do an overlay, that's one thing. But if you have a really, really long f uh, free edge and you try to build an extension, what's going to end up happening is that free edge is going to end up basically curling away from the enhancement as it grows out. So if you wanted to slightly trim it back, you don't need to trim it all the way, just slightly trim it back. That's going to make a huge, huge difference. Okay, so this again, I have to wait till it sets. Now, here's the thing. If you want, again, after this sets and you, you go ahead and you pinch the nail, right? What you can do, which is absolutely amazing, is if you decided that you wanted to go ahead and fill it with a gel, you would be able to do that. Um, let's go ahead and see what kind of gel that I have. So, oops. This is not completely set. If I decided that I wanted to fill it with concealer peach, I can go ahead and do this. Um, this is kind of a hybrid, hybrid style of nail. Now, again, that is a choice. You have the choice of doing that. If you decided that you wanted to go ahead and just fill it with acrylic, you can also do that as well. Uh, gel is more porous. That's why you can't put acrylic. No, gel is non-porous. So hard gel is non-porous. That's why you can't soak it off. Acrylic is porous. That's why you can. It breaks down with acetone. So if acrylic is porous by nature, then gel is going to bond to it really, really uh, well. Um, it is. It, it was 8.52, so we're about three minutes in. The temperature in here is 78 degrees. It's starting to get uh, quite, it's, it's quite warm. So you can see at this point that I'm actually able to, like, look at this. So about three minutes in, right? Like you can see the acrylic. I could start to mold it, right? So I'm just, I'm just showing you guys. I'm not going to be able to depend. So eight, it was about three and a half minutes is going to be the perfect pinching point. Uh, one of the things you can do is you could always use a magic wand. So don't come directly over the top. I want to be able to show you guys something with, with, with the wand, right? You don't come directly like this. What you do is you come at an angle like this, right? So it focuses your attention right there. So if you're pinching right there at the side, then basically what you're doing is you're going to force the nail. So like if it's this, if, if, if this is my finger, then what I want to be, I see a lot of uh, students, what they do is they go like this and then it slips off and it slips off. If you come like this at this point at an angle, then you're going to be able to focus your attention right there. Right, and that's what you want to be able to do. That's going to bring the natural nail in. So you have about a three minute window before you can pinch. So what I usually do is I build the free edge and then I move on to the next finger. And by the time I'm done usually doing this free edge and this free edge, then I come back and I start to pinch, right? You have to be conscious about it because you can get to the fourth finger and you're like, oh, I forgot to pinch. And then you're like, it's already dry and you're not gonna be able to do anything. Um, okay, so once we're done pinching the nail, then, then ag again, how long do you pinch for? You, you literally just have to be able to hold it. You can see this is already set. I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. Again, I'm working on plastic, so I'm not going to be able to mold this uh, really, really tight. But normally when you pinch uh, for about maybe like two or three seconds, the acrylic will hold in shape. That's what you want to be able to do. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to fill this. You can fill with gel or you can continue filling with acrylic. It's not a problem. So notice when I fill with acrylic, I want to be able to do touch on cuticle work. You see my brush? It doesn't matter what brush you're using, whether you're using a number nine or you're using a number 12. You see I get my brush flat. When I'm actually here and I submerse my brush, and I, and I touch it, and then I bounce, 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 right? I, I, I pick up a really, really nice bead on one side of my brush. I wanna be able to show you guys something. When I set this down to the very back end, the tip of my brush literally gets behind as I'm working. You see this? So I'm, I'm touching, 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 touching to get it tight, to get it tight to the back. 
that's what I need to do when I'm working around the cuticle area. I find that a lot of beginners, when they're working with acrylic, what they end up doing is they do this. They end up picking up the acrylic, and what they do is they set it down like this with this big bulge, and then they're just staring at it, hoping they're going to be able to move it with their Jedi mind power, right? It's like... You, you, you can't do that. that. That's not what's going to, you can't, like if you sit there and stare at it, the acrylic is going to give you a gigantic middle finger, man. I'm telling you. You have to be able to, as soon as you pick it up and you're holding the finger down at this angle, you have to be able, again, with the tip of the brush, so as soon as I set it down, you see the space that I have? I usually set it down with about that much space. That way I could get the tip of the brush and I'm like, literally, I'm like, it's almost like this motion. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the product starts to run down. So it's like really light. It's a very, very light motion when you're working around the, the cuticle area. So I, I feel that in these, say something, I feel that in these live videos, because I have such high definition on my phone, and I can explain to you guys with such detail when I'm working, I think it clicks. It, it really makes a huge difference. There's a difference between watching it live and then watching it on, you can watch it on YouTube all day long. You're like, God, dude, that dude makes it look so easy. I get so frustrated. But when you actually get to watch this one-on-one -on -one live and I actually get to work around the cuticle area and explain to you my, the sensation that I'm having and, and the pressure that I'm using when I'm working around the cuticle areas, game changing. It really does make a huge difference. All right, so let's go ahead and get right back to it. I'm gonna get in real, real tight, okay? Let me go ahead and get position. I'm going to get in real close so that you guys can see uh, everything. So from the point I pick it up to the point that I set it down. So I'm gonna submerse my brush. You see that divot? I need to flatten that out, right? That was inside the powder. Um, Watch this. I'm going to submerse my brush. I'm going to tap. I'm going to get boom, boom. I'm like bouncing in the surface. I'm going to get a really, really nice bead. Now, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to see, I release it. Now, I release and then I quickly touch, really light touch, really light touch. Boom, boom. I'm done. I don't even need to mess with the cuticle area anymore. The product is starting to flow. The product is starting to flow. Where am I going to pull? I'm going to pull from the front. I'm gonna pull from the front, right? And that, that way it keeps most of the bulk right back there, right? So I'm not going to start brushing it forward. I'm really pulling from the front to kind of rebalance the acrylic. And then once the acrylic starts to set, it leaves most of the, it leaves most of the shape where you want it. At this point, once it's in this point right here, then what you can end up doing is using the body of the brush really to kind of contour and brush forward. Contour, right? I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very light as I start to brush the acrylic, but I don't brush it from the back end. I really, really take my time, right? I really take my time and allow the product to run down all the way to this point so that I can basically execute a full overlay in one pearl. That's what I want to be able to do, okay? So it, for me, it's like one of the things I'm really focusing on is how big of a pearl, right, do I pick up to work on something like this size? Um, you have to remember that... The, the length of the of the of the fingers that you you the refill size right we sell the the tr the trainer refill sizes if you buy the one size refill packs they're all going to be one large size just like this so a lot of my students uh in the past uh that come through the one week uh program you know on day one uh, you're literally practicing overlaying a nail i mean look it's the same size nail. You're, you, dude, if you get clients that have natural nails like this, you're like blessed beyond belief. This is rare to get somebody that has a natural nail that looks like this. 
if you can overlay a nail like this, bro, when you freaking get to a nail like this, this is gonna be like, this is gonna be like super easy to do, I'm telling you, okay? So once we're done filing, and, and again, don't like, dude, I, I barely, like someone's like, oh my gosh, you don't have enough product right there. Dude, that doesn't matter, right? It, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna come in and try to fill that area right there. You're not gonna try to fill that area right there. You're gonna blend it flush with your uh, hand file and then basically you're gonna be applying so many different mediums on top. A lot of the times that you guys are doing nails, not a lot of people are gonna wear nude nails by themselves. They're always going to be, you're always gonna apply color on top, gel polish on top, um, different types of, of nail art on top. Don't be, again, all the beginners out there, I wanna be able to explain to you when, oh, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a cuticle here. So what I usually do with this is I'll go ahead and take my toenail clipper and just snap that off, right? And then this is going to allow me to take my hand file, right? I'm just gonna take my hand file and then I just kind of just go around the edges so that it's nice and smooth, just like that. And then you're going to notice, you know, once I get these in, boom, I'm gonna have really, really smooth cuticle area. So don't like, yeah, you're not, you're not going, so it says I'm scared to cause heat with my EFL, how do I prevent that? Um, you, you have to remember that if, and I'm, I'm gonna file this into shape right now. If you're afraid of uh, uh, heat, first thing I recommend is put it on your own finger and don't start your electric file at 20,000 RPMs. You want to be able to run it at a, a, a fast enough motion where it doesn't stop, but it has to be slow enough so that you have control. You have to learn how to feather the, you have to learn how to feather. So the key to, it's not, it's not doing this motion side to side. That's not how you do it. You have to learn how to file in one direction. You have to learn to file towards yourself. So the easiest way to file is like, again, pulling towards yourself in one, starting from here, pulling towards yourself, starting from here, pulling towards yourself, starting from the back, pulling towards yourself. Um, and where then you get to a motion where y you literally, you're like, okay, I don't feel that anymore. So one step at a time, I'm gonna go ahead and break this down so that you guys can see. Um, let's go ahead and get this. This is almost set and ready to rock and roll. Uh, for the beginners, uh, someone said, what kit do I recommend for the beginners? Um, it all depends on what you want uh, to work with. Uh, I'd say for uh, a beginner, the core kit is a great kit. The ultimate kit has a mixture of everything. I'm gonna break all the kits down next week. I'm gonna do a live and show you guys what comes in the kit. And we're gonna start doing nails with the kits so that you guys can actually see what's in them and how they work and what you're gonna be able to get the most out of them. Okay, so <clears throat> what I have to be able to do in this circumstance is I have to be able to hold my hand file and you, you guys can see how I'm holding my thumb, keeping it straight as I can on both sides. I wanna be able to build that shelf. You see that shelf? You can see how it runs from this straight all the way to the very, very back. That means I'm keeping it dead straight. I'm going to tune up the very, very front. We're doing, again, a very short, um, we're doing a very, very short bitten nail. Uh, she, she's like, I want coffin. And I'm like, you got it. So I'm going to make sure that my edges parallel to my finger are completely straight on the sides. And then once we actually shape one, two, three, four, five, let's go ahead and break down my e fail. I I'm gonna do. A, I'm gonna do next week. I'll do a class on electric filing for you guys. So, for those of you guys that again have tuned in for the first time, and you're very frustrated because you don't know um, how to use your electric file, I will do an electric filing class for you next week. I promise. I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put the safety bit in. Uh, this time I can get it all the way in because I'm doing a short nail. I'm going to click it on. Um, and then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to run my electric file again. So let's go to, let's go 10,000 RPMs, right? 
What's the advantage of hybrid nouns? Good marketing. <laughs> It's, you know, it's, it's, you're using, I, I think it's a combination of it, gel sticks to acrylic. Uh, you're marketing a service that uses the combination of both gel bonds to the natural nail really, really, really well. I think it depends on the customer and their natural nails. Um, I think gel bonds to the natural nails better than acrylic does. So if you have a, a person who has bitten nails and you know that acrylic's not going to stick, you could fill it with gel and you're going to know for sure that the gel is going to adhere extremely well. Okay, so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to look at the side profile. This upper arch is a little bit of, like it's it's offset. I have way too much product in the front, so I want to be able to file my upper arch into shape. I'm filing in one direction. I'm starting in the middle as I'm working towards myself, okay? And then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to look down the barrel of the nail. You can see the ledges, right? You can see the ledge. So if I'm pulling towards myself in one direction, one direction, one direction, you see I'm working the zones, zone three of the barrel in one direction, one direction towards myself. You can start to see the, the, the C curve really come into play, nice and even from side to side. Right. Then what you want to be able to do is when you're working around the cuticle, again, how I position my hand, right? I position my hand. I don't hold it like this. This is not how you hold it when you're electric filing. You want to be able to have your client come at an angle so that when you come over the top like a blanket, your finger is in this position. It opens it up so that you're in here. See that? Then what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to get my barrel around the cuticle area and, and work around in one direction. The purpose of the electric file is to take down bulk. So as soon as I'm done taking down that, uh, that thickness, I could start to work Right, I'm done shaping the eye. All I'm doing is working in one direction all the way through and I'm finished. That's it. I will, yeah, that, this, is the, this is the core safety bit. Um, we just got the tornadoes back in stock. Um, we have an inventory of about 3,000 pieces that just came in. So uh, they'll be up on the website uh, within a day. So I know there's a ton of people that want them. It's an incredible bit. So what I'm going to end up doing with my hand file, again, I'm going to hold it on the top. I'm going to go around the cuticle area so you can see that ledge starting to disappear so because I'm taking my hand file and I'm working it down. So you can see the angle from this position. What does it look like from this position? It looks like this. This is what it looks like. From here, it looks like this. What does it look like from here? It looks like this. You see that? I'm really focusing on that edge. I'm not placing the whole hand file. I'm really focusing running it around that edge so that it clears it up. Okay? Same thing on this side. You can see I have it at an angle. So I, I, I contact up, let it flow. Contact up, let it flow. You can run, run the file, let it flow down. Tickle, you're like you're almost tickling it around the edge. Once you have that totally set, then I break it down into two. The first side is going to be the left side. I position my hand file like this, and then I file in one direction down so that I can file it nice and even. And then same thing, contact up, let it flow. Contact, 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 contact. All right, so that you guys can see how this works out, okay? So what we've done, last but not least, I need to be able to look right here so that I can get a really, really nice client profile to get this dead straight. I need to make sure, right? And you can see, right, the nail was, bit, the nail was like all the way down to here. And I sculpted this out. So if somebody has, like, if somebody has bit nails and they walk out with a set that looks like this, where they have a really nice shaped, like, active length nail, man, they're going to be so pumped. I mean, they really, really are. I mean, that's the most important thing. So 
hope this helps. Again, I went ahead and finished with acrylic. You can do both. Like, the question that came up was, can you fill it, can you fill the acrylic with gel? Yes, you can. And then someone asked a little bit later, like, why would you do it? It really depends on the situation. Acrylic doesn't bond to everyone really, really well. Gel bonds to a lot of people well. So if you have a real stubborn lifter, then maybe you build the free edge with acrylic. You pinch it because that's how you have to cast the free edge to get the natural nail to grow straight. And then you fill it with a concealer pink. Um, one thing we'll be sure is when the customer comes back for a fill, it's gonna be really, really easy to maintain because the gel files like that. It's like butter. It's absolutely amazing and easy to do. When you're filing, how do you protect the cuticle areas? Um, I'm not attacking it. So, you know, I'm resting my file. Um, I've been filing for so long that when I'm filing around the cuticle areas, I'm very precise. I don't ever get near the skin, um, but I'm usually, I let my file rest uh, and tuck up underneath and I'm being very, very careful as I'm working around the edges. <clears throat> with experience and with time, you will do the same exact thing. Before you know it, you'll be able to file around the cuticle area as fast as you want and you're not gonna hit the cuticles at all. The only thing I can say is it takes time, it takes patience, it's getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, comfortable with the uncomfortable. Nails is not an easy thing to do. I really, really appreciate uh, all of the support that you guys have been giving us. Be patient, you guys. You guys have a safe weekend. Be safe. Um, and uh, again, if there's anything I can help with, send me a message, Young Nails a message, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace.